Okay, you're watching another episode of Mind Connect USA. Uh, I'm your host, Jared Downey, and we've got today, we've got uh, Kruger Hard Facing, you're a company I've just learned about, I am, and we've got their founder on, Nick Kruger. Nick, welcome to the show. Good to have you on. Welcome. Um, okay. Have you, uh, have, has anybody stuck a camera in your face and done one of these interviews before? <laughs> um, not this, this kind, but yeah, I've done a few, um, few interviews in the past. Yeah. You're at a Sudbury. You've got, you've got very like mind connect is obviously very active. You've got a lot of, yep. uh, promotion coming out of there. It's a really, really good crew. Just sort of getting the, the local companies out into the market. Hey, absolutely. Um, what, uh, what made you found the company? Um, we've been, uh, I mean, we're in the, in, I've been in a welding industry my whole life, basically. I'm a welder by trade. It just, um, we've seen a demand for wear products, basically. So we designed some machines. My dad designs machines that welds these components together that does the overlay. Uh, so we manufacture our own machines and then we build the products for our customers. So how long were you welding before? Just to give the audience some context. I've been welding. I've been welding since I was twelve years old. Probably. Twelve. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a pretty. It's was it a? Has it been a pretty good trade for you? Um, just over the years, it's you seem. Yeah, to I started just. Work. Yeah, exactly. I was just. I was a tradesman working at um, smelters, mines, um, different mills. Yeah. Did that for many many years, and did you ever did you ever go onto the oil rigs and do all that that stuff? I went. I did a six month Alberta. Did yeah. some welding there, mostly on rigs in the fab shops. Yeah, yeah. Not out in the not out in the field a whole lot. And and so when you you know you so you started the company three years ago. Is that right? Two two years ago. Two years ago. So really yeah. new company. Um, Very new company. Yeah. What was? I mean, I've started. I've bought one company and I've started one company and I was, and I, when I was a kid, I was kind of part of one company. So I've, I've been involved with it a few times. What was the first, what was the first couple months? Uh, what was it all about? Um, you know, you got to do branding and websites and start talking to customers. Yeah, what, the, what the first, first, few months? first few months, even the first year it was basically just setting up machines and mm. just running them, running them and getting the, everything you know, worked out for uh, to make a really good product to get a good overlay. So all our stuff is welded in, and um, so it's mechanically bonded to the pipe. Mm. So basically, we've just been um, research and development, different different methods, different applications, different products to put inside the pipe. That's basically what we've been doing the last. Uh, this year, we've been more into production, but the first year was yeah. all research, development, testing. Could you explain mechanically welded? I don't really, I don't have a clear understanding. So it's a, so there's mechanically bonded is it's so you can glue something on. Mm. You can, when a mechanical bond is like you're welding it together. So it's, it's literally one piece. It's not bolted on. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like one solid piece going on. Exactly. Yeah, right. Okay. Exactly. Where did you see the demand in the market specifically? Was there companies you were seeing working? You went, or was it from your father's knowledge? You, like, how did you actually see it? Definitely, my father has a big part of this. He's he makes the machines. Yeah, uh, we just seen a a demand for wear products because they were having problems with um, pipe bursts, mm. like not bursting, but they wear out and they leak. They cause messes. They cause downtime spills and then these parts some of these parts were frequently getting changed right so now we come up with a product that you know lasts a lot longer very wear resistant for our clients for wear for high wear areas okay can we just walk through you you say areas where like pipe wears uh can you yeah. walk us through uh maybe mine specifically but we can go outside the mining yeah. industry as well but but let's start with mine specifically. Where do you see most of the wear in an operation? Um, let's say in a mine itself would be uh, pace fill lines, slick lines, um, any, you know, dewatering elbows, anything that has an abrasive medium in it or an abrasive fluid, anything, a sand, you know, um, 
Pace fills lines. I, I'm quite curious about this because starting a new company again. I I, I have yeah. the background myself, so I'm always I'm always kind of curious when you start a new company. Um, how do you sort of get in the door with with these? Because mines, I mean, it's it can be kind of tricky to sort of get in those first those first uh that first invoice is not an easy thing to send no it's definitely not easy okay so i want to talk a little bit more just about the product if yeah. do you have a comparison of you know it without without what you offer without the overlay without the lining yeah. um yeah. first with the lining is it is it doubling the year? Or is it tripling? Is it fifty percent? Do you have sort of an idea, depending on, or maybe we, a couple applications we could look at? Yeah, we have ideas. So there's, um, let's say we're comparing to a mild steel piece of pipe. So you're talking just a standard, um, standard elbow things like that. So the hard face, the chromium overlay, is very extremely hard and wear resistant. Um, you're gonna see. We can't guarantee. You know, it all depends on the application, on what they're pumping through these systems. But we've seen uh, 10 to 15 times the life of a standard wow. mild steel elbow or oh, so you can't, casted elbow. You can't even compare. <laughs> no, no. No. Now, the one behind you, that looks like, Vic, uh, that's a Victolic uh, elbow, this, right? This one right here? Yeah. This is, yeah, this is a six inch Vitalik. Well, it's not a Vitalik elbow. It's got Vitalik ends on it. Right, yeah, yeah. So it can be tied into those systems. Um, yeah, so it's 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 built up with chromium carbide overlay, especially more on the outside of the elbow where there's more wear. Yeah. And so it's it, an easily replaced part. It's a, that's a standard part. They can just take that out, put right. this part in. Absolutely. So are you doing. Now, are you doing like welded ends as well? Like, what what is I guess the and fit? Yeah, different end fittings. It could be. It, it all depends on the drawings we're getting, the scope of the work. Uh, so it could be flanged, Vic. There's all different kinds of end fittings that can go. Any industry end fitting, standard industry end fittings, right. basically. So when you're talking, who who is who are you talking to at the mine? Is it are you dealing with the engineers? Um, uh, yeah, maintenance engineers, uh, contractors putting up the stuff. Um, sometimes the companies will request a chromium carbide overlay part. Right, it's actually spec'd in. It's spec'd in. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you're you're obviously out of Sudbury. That's you know that's mining that's that's mining country out there. Um, are exactly. you are you serving are you serving other industries outside of that, or are you primarily focused? Obviously, you're at PDAC right now, but yeah. What, um, are you prim are primarily serving mining or other industries as well? Uh, any industries. It is it is a fairly niche product. It's not for everybody. It's for extreme wear places. Right. Okay. So you know, if you're pumping water through these, it's not it's not for you. Right. You know, it needs to be something very highly abrasive so that it makes sense for the customer. When you look at, like, uh, well, let's go with PDAC. Have you got a chance to yeah. talk to people? Um, yeah. you know, like across Canada, anybody from out of country. Did you get a sense of that there's markets? Um, you know, obviously Mind Connect USA is the show. They've yep. uh they've got a presence out in the US now and they're pushing Canadian companies yep. into that market. Do you get a sense of opportunity in those regions? Absolutely. There's there's where there's where in in big time wear problems in this industry because we're pumping ores, slurries. Right. It's all very highly abrasive. Have you had have you had good conversations with anybody that come in and you went oh uh, yeah absolutely um, we've had people in Sudbury saying oh we didn't know you guys were here and it's nice to know you're in Sudbury and we can do some work or even local like local companies yeah well only two and a half you years know. it's such a new company yeah is it, it is a new company well, exactly have you enjoyed the experience like. I, I again I know what it's like. Oh yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. What what's been the biggest <laughs> challenge for you? The biggest challenge? I mean just getting started. I think um dealing with just trying to get into the doors of these places. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to prove uh what our parts what our products can do, really. It's such an interesting once, industry in that yeah, way. Yeah, and it takes it takes once they put a product in 
it takes quite a while for them to realize, oh, okay, it's lasting. Right, yeah. <laughs> then then we're going to go on and put more of these pieces in. I, I you know, there's always that, a yeah. yeah, there's always a trial run. So if the piece is wearing out in 2 to 3 weeks and we put a trial run in, well we'll know pretty quickly. But at some places there, you know, the piece is lasting a year. Well, we're replacing it hoping for 5, 6, you know, whatever. That'll take a long time for feedback. Right. <laughs> so those are the challenges of these yeah. of these parts is they do last a lot longer. So the the time it takes to for the for the customer to do the math and realize the the benefits sometimes takes a little bit while. As a, with your background as a welder, it does it have you found that are, are you doing direct sales with like are you working directly with clients? Yep. Yeah. Yep. With clients or or contractors basically. Yep. Um, so are you, do you find obviously with your background, it kind of cuts through that, you know, you get someone like me, I, I mean, I've been around welding and pulled wrenches and all that, but I, yeah. I it's not my trade. Um, you yeah. get someone out with me, I'm just going to be always a step behind. Do you find having that trade and having the experience in the industry, does it cut through a lot of the, a lot of the, fat? I don't think I'd be, I don't think I would be in this position without being a welder in my and did all the stuff that I did to get to here. Yeah. It's all been welding related. Uh, uh, circling back to the products though, is it, I know this is a bit of a simple question, but, uh, or maybe I should know this, but are you bringing in steel products and then, then coating them? Or do clients come to you and say, hey, we've got an inventory and we need the coating. How are you approaching that? Or do you provide the full inventory? I provide the full inventory. In some cases, we do get parts supplied to us that we just line. Oh, okay. And then most, in most cases, though, we, we manufacture from start to finish. So we'll put end fittings on, cut fit, tees, elbows, laterals. We'll do that all in-house. Sometimes we'll get the pieces sent to us and we'll line them and send it back to the client. What is what is the range of, of line? Is it pretty much anything or, like again, specifically in the mining, is it... Can it be a, a, a two inch pipe? Could it be a 36 inch pipe if it needed? Could it be a culvert yeah. if you needed? Like, you know, yeah. how, what is the sort of the range? So we specialize from two inch pipe to 12 inch. Oh, we okay. do do up to 16, but we specialize from two to 12. And we also specialize in long radius elbows. So this is an eight inch 5D elbow. So when you do long radius elbows, there's much less impact of the product. You have a short elbow. Well, the product is really hitting hard. Yeah. Where if you have a long sweeping elbow, you get much less turbulence, much less resistance, which gives you less wear. Longer lasting product. Yeah. So is there a difference in the coating between the two or is it the same coating? It's the same coating. The application's different. Yeah. Um, obviously, the audience here is not just going to be in eastern Canada, but into the U.S., yeah. um, in western Canada. Are you yeah. are you at capacity to service those markets already? Yes, we are, absolutely. Um, what what kind of, roughly, do you have, like, lead times and that sort of, I mean, obviously, supply chain's a big question nowadays, so... Lead time all depends on the scope of the work yeah. and the job. Yeah. It varies. It always varies. Could be from four to six weeks to... You know, four months, six months, it all depends on the job. Um, just uh, a, la a la last question is an entrepreneur question. Um, yeah. Is it is it uh, is it more or less work than you thought it was going to be getting this thing going? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely more for yeah. sure. <laughs> well, Nick, thank you for joining the show. These uh, it's nice to do just these videos where we, you know, companies that maybe just people just don't, well, new companies that everybody's sort yeah. of learning about right now. So it's lots of fun. Thank you for joining the show. Of course, we'll put links to your website and, uh, yeah, yeah. hopefully some people, the right people will see it at the right time and, uh, you can get some new clients. Oh, well, thanks, Jared. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we've got the, uh, we'll have the Kruger hardfacing.com website. Uh, you can go and visit them, obviously connect directly with them um, and, and check out what they're doing. And w thank you for watching everybody. We will see you on the next episode of Mind Connect USA.